Hi, welcome to Driver Training and our guide to pedestrian crossings. Now, first of all, can we say that this is not a pedestrian crossing? This also is not a pedestrian crossing. Why? Well, we'll explain that to you later. When it comes to crossings, there's two main types, uncontrolled and controlled. Now, before we get into those, there is another type that's called a pedestrian refuge. Now, this isn't a pedestrian crossing, but what it does, it allows people to cross the road safely in two halves. So you can see the bollards in the middle of the road. And there's also the concrete edge around it to protect the pedestrians. And what this means is on long and busy roads, the pedestrians can walk across one side of the road, wait in the middle until there's a gap, and then cross the second half of the road. And what that does, it allows the traffic to keep flowing, but also provides a safe space in the middle of the road for the pedestrians to wait for a suitable gap. Now, these pedestrian refuges come in different shapes and sizes. So you can see, for instance, with this one here, there's no zigzag lines on approach. So it's not a pedestrian crossing, but it is a pedestrian refuge allowing somewhere safe in the middle of the road for people to cross. You'll also notice very often they may have drop curbs, but like with this one here, it also has a white Belisha beacon on it so that it lights up of an evening so people know there's pedestrians there. So that's what these are. So they're not pedestrian crossings, but you need to be aware they are where pedestrians will wait to cross. So our first type then is uncontrolled crossing. So that's basically the zebra crossing, the black and white stripes like a zebra. Now on approach, you have the zigzag lines up to it, which means you're not allowed to park in that area. You're not allowed to overtake within those lines as well. And what you have to do with these is use anticipation. So we can see the pedestrian approaching the crossing. We've got to think, well, what if he cuts across the crossing? What if he just runs past it? I'm not sure what he's going to do. So I need to be slowing down and be prepared to stop because we don't know what he's going to do. We've got to use anticipation. Let's see this. So on the left there, you can see the pedestrian running towards the crossing. We don't know what he's going to do. So we slow down. We see he's carrying on past so we can carry on. In this one, we're looking nice and early to the right and we can see the pedestrian with the pram. Now, this is where looking early really helps because if you wait until you're at this point, you'll look and go, oh, it's clear I can carry on through, but it clearly isn't. So we have to stop, let the pedestrian cross and clear the crossing, and then we can go. So as we now look at the next example of this, if we're looking early this time, we can see the pedestrian at the crossing. They're looking up towards us, so they are going to cross. So we use the same thing again. We just approach slowly and that gives them then time to get across the crossing. And because they're on our side, we need them to clear the crossing to make sure it's safe and then we can carry on through. Now with zebra crossing, sometimes you find the bollards in the middle uh, and that denotes that this pedestrian crossing is actually two separate crossings. So on approach, while the pedestrians are on the right side of the crossing, we can legally drive through. However, as they get to the middle section or on the middle section, that's where we need to be checking the mirrors, slowing down and stopping. 
and we'll see this example here. Now, in this first example, the pedestrian is coming from the left across to the right. So they're crossing our side of the road first. So that means that as they get to that centre part, we can now go through because they're on a different crossing. So we are OK to carry on. In this example, we can see the pedestrian on the right coming across. So at this point, we need to be checking our mirrors, slowing down, be prepared to stop. But in this instance, we've got a second pedestrian. Now, with where they are, they're not on the centre part. So technically, we could carry on through. However, if you're already slowing down or stopped, it just makes more sense to let the pedestrian come across onto our side of the crossing, let them fully clear it, and then go. And that way, it just keeps everyone safe and the situation under control. So let's go on to controlled crossing. So this is where, as a driver, we get told when to stop. So there are a few different types, so we're going to go through them. Now, the key with these is not so much the type of crossing, but how you deal with them. So the first one is a pelican crossing. That's the traditional type where you press the button, it changes, it gives you about 10 to 15 seconds to cross, then you get a flashing amber light followed by a green. Now, the flashing amber light means if the crossing is clear, you can go. So here we see the lights on red. It allows approximately 10 seconds for the people to cross. And then we'll see that the light starts flashing amber. Well, because they're across the crossing, we can now carry on through. You don't have to wait for the green if it is clear and safe to go. So remember, with a pelican crossing, it's red, flashing amber, and then it will go to green. So on the flashing amber, as long as the crossing is clear and it's safe, you can go. The next type is toucan crossing. So this means two types of pedestrians can cross, both pedestrians and cyclists. So sometimes the centre part will be wider to allow them to cross. Sometimes you may have bike lanes on approach. So you may have the blue sign visible or you might just see the bike lane designated at the side. Another way to tell is you can look at the highlighted sign that where they press the button and that will often show pedestrians and cyclists as well. So let's see that again in action. So as we come around the corner here, the lights are on red. Now, as we look at it on the left, we've got the cycle lane blue sign. The highlighted signs on the box where you press the button show a pedestrian and a cyclist. And we can see that it's quite wide, the middle part. So we know this is actually a toucan crossing. So the light sequence is red, red and amber, then green. So we can't go until the light is green. Now on approach to toucan crossings, it's just worth remembering that cyclists can approach them quite quickly. So it's just worth being aware that even if the lights are on green, they may try and come across. Now, with toucan crossings, there are different variations. So there are now what's called parallel crossings, where this one is on a zebra crossing, but it has a second lane for the cyclist. So this is a parallel crossing. Now, as we said, there are different variations of this. So this one is on a zebra crossing. This one is on a normal toucan crossing. Now, as we approach, again, it doesn't matter on approach what type it is, realistically, but you can see there are two gaps, one with the red tactile pavement, which helps those who have um, partial sight or are blind to know that it's a crossing. 
The other gap is just normal flat tarmac. So we know there's two crossings on this. Also added to that, there's two sets of lane studs. The first one there in red, the second one in yellow. This shows us that it's a parallel crossing, one for pedestrians, one for cyclists or even horse riders, as the sign said, on approach to it. So again, it's just waiting for that green light before you go. Then you have a puffing crossing. Now, the puffing crossings are the ones that look like they've got the little camera on top of the light. And what that is, it's actually an infrared beam sender. So what it does, it sends a load of infrared beams down onto the crossing. So while there are people on the crossing, the infrared beams are broken, so the crossing knows to stay on red. Uh, when the people disappear from it, those infrared beams go back to normal. Um, the crossing knows that it's clear and can change light. So puffing stands for pedestrian, user-friendly, intelligent crossing. So here's our example here. We've got the puffing crossing with the beams on top there. Now, whereas with the Pelican crossing, it gave us 10 seconds to cross, and before the person was off it, they were changing. In this instance, you notice the lights don't change until the pedestrians are actually off the crossing and clear of it, and then it changes. So the light sequence for a puffing crossing is red, red and amber, and green. So again, it's not so much how we deal with it on approach, but how we deal with the lights when they change. The next type is equestrian crossings or Pegasus crossings. Now, these allow horses to cross. Um, you may notice it because of the highlighted sign on the buttons. You may have fences on approach to it, which kind of hide the traffic from the horses. Um, it, they're not that common, but they do exist. So with this one, again, the light sequence is red, red and amber, and then green. So we obviously wait for the horses to be fully clear. And then when the light turns to green, again, proceed carefully um, we wouldn't want to rev and just zoom off and scare the horses. Our final type then, well, these are called staggered crossings. Now, these again are on very busy roads or junctions, and you'll find they're two separate crossings, again, with the centre part in the middle to keep the pedestrians safe. So you'll see that here as we come down. The lights are changing. Now, there's a lot of traffic, as you can see. So what it allows the pedestrian to do is walk across from the right side uh, into the middle. Now it gives them somewhere safe in the middle to stand until either there's a gap in the traffic or the traffic lights change to allow the person to cross. And you can see here, again, it's a very busy uh, area and it is safer for the person just to wait in the middle, make sure of a gap, wait till the lights change, then decide to go. And that's what we see in our second example here, that the lights change, the person is able to come across the first crossing Again, these are light controlled, so if this went to green now, we're able to go. The pedestrian waits in the middle, either for a gap in the traffic or for the lights to change and stop the traffic, and then they're able to cross that crossing safely, and then we're able to go. So you can see how a staggered crossing works. Now, a lot of crossings these days are actually a mix of different ones. So you can see this is a puffin crossing, but it's also a toucan crossing. Um, you've got the bike lane on approach. You've got the puffing control there. So very often they're a mix of both. So it's looking at what the light is. If it's a flashing amber, 
remember we can go. If it's um, red and amber, then wait for the green. Another type you may find is a temporary pedestrian crossing, and that's what's shown here. Because these are temporary lights, there's no road markings on approach. So do you see the red sign on the left there? That acts as the stop line. So sometimes that red sign might be quite a distance from where the actual crossing is, but it's that that we go by. So wherever that red sign is, that is what we class as the stop line. These aren't a pedestrian crossing, but it is a crossing to bear in mind. These are called level crossings. Now here, once you see those lights start to flash, just stop. Don't try risk going across them unless you're really on the white line at the point that they come down. Because it's telling you there are trains approaching and so therefore we need to make sure that we keep everyone safe. Now as you sit there you may see the train go past like here but that doesn't mean the barriers are about to come back up. Uh, if they don't come up straight away it means there's another train approaching this crossing. So again just be aware, sit there, wait now, when this barrier comes up, you'll see there's pedestrians on both sides. Now, one thing that sometimes happens is obviously they walk in the road to go round each other. So although this isn't actually a pedestrian crossing, it is worth bearing in mind pedestrians may step out in front of you on this also, from the driving point, you don't want to get caught in that yellow box because you can see the cameras on the left there. And if you get caught in that yellow box, even for a second or two, it's automatically a £120 fine that comes through your letterbox. So that brings us back to our statement at the beginning. So why is this not a pedestrian crossing would well, you notice as you approach it, the lines on the road are straight white lines. They are not zigzag lines. So what this is, is primarily a traffic light with a secondary use as a crossing. So with this, even if nobody presses that button, as here in this example, these lights are going to change. So we know it's a traffic light. Again, as we come down on this one, the first set of lights we approach, look, have got zigzag lines. So we know unless somebody presses the button, these lights aren't going to change. But then as we head off down the road to the second set of lights, as we come down, these are not a set of pedestrian crossings because the white lines are straight white lines. So even if it's three o'clock in the morning on a cold, wet November day, these traffic lights are going to change because that's their function. But they have a secondary use as a pedestrian crossing if somebody presses the button. So if we know this, then we won't get taken by surprise. We won't approach them thinking, oh, it's a pedestrian crossing. Nobody's there. The light isn't going to change. And then suddenly the light's changing and we have to panic to think about what to do. If we know it's a straight white line on approach to it, we know it's a traffic light. And at some point that traffic light is going to change. We hope that's helped you understand more about pedestrian crossings and how we use them. If it has, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think or what subjects you'd like covered, especially if you're on your ADI part two, ADI part three or standards check. Also, don't forget the link to the uh, briefing folder. Some of the diagrams you've seen in the video are in the description below. My name's Chris from Driver Training. Remember, teach well, drive safely, 
and we'll see you all again in our next video.